Um, tonight we're going to have Nate Maynard, amen. I know a lot of you men have heard him. I miss you like crazy. That's right. For, you know, for almost two years, I've been behind him trying to get him here on Friday nights to speak. But I'm so glad you brought your girls and you have grown, young lady. Oh, my word. And it just remind me of my girls, but I remember, oh my word, I think I remember your smaller one, actually both of them when they were born almost. So that's awesome. So it's good family. Um, I'm so glad that they're here with them, but Nate, come up and preach to us. Amen. Give them a hand. All right. Well, definitely honored to be here with you. If you got your Bibles, open up to Matthew chapter nine. Excuse me, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. But very grateful to God to be sober today. And um, grateful to be with you and grateful to have my wife and girls here. And they've been troopers. And um, you know, I'm very grateful to God to um, for his mercy, you know, in my life. And very just grateful to, um, to not be in jail tonight. You know, and um, I'm grateful to not be strung out on drugs tonight and be thinking clearly. And, you know, I, I've spent, you know, just way too much time, you know, and in, in jail or strung out. And I'm just very grateful to God. And, you know, God is God is merciful and um, I'm just very thankful and uh, we're going to start here in verse 9 of Matthew chapter number 6. <clears throat> the Bible says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And I want you to keep your ears open and your eyes as you're looking at the, uh, the Bible here about the words forgive. The Bible says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. But if ye forgive men their trespass, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Lord, we love you. Thank you, God, for bringing us out tonight, God. And I, I've really been encouraged tonight, Lord. I want to thank you for Brother Merced and Brother Tim and uh, Brother Connor and Brother Paul and all the faithful men who come every week. Lord, I thank you for them, God. I thank you for their example, Lord. And I want to thank you, God, for for loving me, Lord, you know, many, most people, Lord, in this room, you know, don't know how foolish and uh, the many, many mistakes that I've made in my life, God, they're, they're clueless if you do, but Lord, I know you do, God, and you still love me, and you've forgiven me, Lord, and you, um, you're merciful, and God, I want to thank you for that, Lord, I ask you to to speak through me, empty me and myself, God, I, I know I'm nothing, Lord, without you, and I, I just, I need your help, Lord, please, amen. So I grew up in North Carolina, as Sergio brought up, this nice Carolina blue shirt, and, you know, it's Duke is puke, wake is fake, and down the toilet with NC State, right? That's what we said there in North Carolina, basketball, but I grew up out in the country, and, um, I had a really good grandfather, and he was a he was a master carpenter, and he um, he built lap steel guitars. He built decks. He built a couple decks for me, and I'll never forget. He um, he had all the wood pre cut for for two decks. All the wood pre cut. The only the only boards if we got any carpenters in here that he had to cut. He had the steps pre built, but just the post for the steps. That was it. Every other board. He had already cut at his house and the house they lived in, which, you know, my wife and girls have been there, but he, he built it, you know, by hand and um, to the, to the roof. But inside his house, he built a, he built a winding staircase and it's really cool. I got pictures of it and we'll be there at Christmas time. He's in heaven now. But, um, <clears throat> but my grandfather was just a master carpenter. 
and uh, just just I've talked to him. He built a um, <clears throat> he built my my parents' uh, bedroom set. He built, what's that thing called? A hutch that we got at home. It's a corner hutch. He just was a master carpenter. Well, my grandfather, when he, when he turned about 78, he had a stroke. And uh, after that stroke, you know, he was never the same after that. And, um, you know, he was always pretty healthy. He's a big guy, big old hands. And I just love being around him. We split wood and just, just, just a remarkable individual with what he accomplished in life. He was a pastor for many years and uh, was a manager of a bank and then had a deck building business and a tombstone business. And my dad took that over. Um, <clears throat> but he had this stroke. And, um, and my grandfather, he was never the same after that stroke. And he, um, <clears throat> you know, he would try to talk and it, you know, it, it, it paralyzed a lot of his body. And I never forget one day my dad called me and uh, dad's like, man, Nathan, I was, you know, out here. I was in the RU home at that time. You want know, to thank God for the RU home and the, and the men, Brother George and uh, Brother Turner and Brother James. You know, just, we need to be grateful for them men. And but um, my dad called me and I was in the home and he's like, Nathan, he's like, man, you wouldn't. He's like, it was really sad today watching your grandfather. And I was like, I was like, yeah, what happened? And so my realm, my grandparents' property, there's a bunch of sheds and he built them all by hand, you know, he just built them from the ground up. That's what he did. And he's like, Nathan, your grandfather was outside and he was on his hands and knees trying to like a board, you know how the end is sometimes a board will just kind of tail up at the end. Well, he's like, your grandfather was down on his hands and knees trying to nail that board in. Now, my grandfather, 20 years before, built these buildings himself by hand. And he would do stuff a lot of times without even help. He'd be like, how'd you do that by yourself? Built that, that uh, winding staircase probably 40 years before at this point. But he called me and he's like, Nathan, your grandfather's out there. And he's like, it really just broke my heart. But he's out there on his hands and knees with his face, you know, inches away from this nail, trying to nail it down. So my grandfather was going along his life pretty good, like I said, till he had this stroke and things changed. And I feel like a lot of us in our life, you know, we're going along pretty good or we're heading toward a direction and something happens in our life that, that creates hurt. And uh, I'm just going to give you a couple facts about hurt tonight. We got two categories of hurt. We got hurt that's self-inflicted, and we got hurt that's not self-inflicted. You know, for me in my life personally, probably 90% of my hurt has been self-inflicted. Nathan chooses to make bonehead decisions and then I'm kicking dope and withdrawing and throwing up and my fam I've hurt my family and my loved ones and I got shame and guilt and frustration probably for me 10 maybe 10 percent of my hurt could I say is not self-inflicted 90 percent man it might even be 95 percent truth be known but I want to say tonight, there's two categories of hurt, self-inflicted, non-self-inflicted. Some facts about hurt. We're going to give a few facts and then give a little fiction about hurt. We all hurt. We all hurt. And I want to ask you tonight, we used to sometimes work all-nighters and we would tease each other and say, dig deep. You know, we're, we done worked all day long and we're going to work all night. And this is the last time we did one at a subway out in, in Hobart. But I want to ask you tonight to dig deep tonight i challenge you i know in my heart that that there's a message that nothing because of me that god wants to to get across to to you to you so open your heart and dig deep we all hurt we've all hurt others rejection hurts i don't like to feel rejection many of us in this room we hurt very deeply um, many of us in this room have never dealt with this deep hurt. We go on about our day faking a smile and, and, and suppressing it and not try to get ahead of myself, but 
when we hurt or someone hurts us, many times we either shut down. You know, I, I'm thinking of multiple people in my mind right now. They just they've shut almost they've shut down. They just like my grandfather, he he he's building these buildings, he's building winding staircases, he's building lap steel guitars and furniture and whatever. He he built a big train table in his basement. And he had this stroke. And guess what? Things changed. He was never the same. And I feel like many of us, we 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 have a hurt that's either self-inflicted or not self-inflicted. And think in your minds right now, what is this hurt for you? What is it that you've did to yourself or what is it that somebody else has done to you that, that you've either bottled up inside or, or you're trying to overcome it? You know, you're, you're, you're doing this or that, trying to just overcome this hurt, but we all hurt. We all have hurt others. Rejection hurts. Many of us hurt deeply. Many of us have never dealt with this hurt. A fact, I need healing. Ah, Nathan Maynard, need healing. Um, <clears throat> facts, forgiveness is the game changer. Facts, God does not want us bogged down in this hurt. Many of us in our life, due to this hurt, have turned to drugs or alcohol or pornography or anger or resentment or bitterness to try to help us deal with this hurt. You realize <clears throat> that... Whatever addiction it is, mine has been, mine has been through my life opiates. Mine has been ecstasy. Mine has been marijuana. Mine's been tobacco. The list just goes on and on. But all of them are just fruits. I'm telling you that that's just all that's just all fruits on the tree of Nathan Maynard here. That that man, you know, you got to ask what it what in Nathan's past did he not deal with. Like, what is the deal? Why, why does it, why is he constantly um, <clears throat> falling and stumbling over himself? The addiction is just a fruit of the tree. It's the root issue that we got to get down to so we can have some true healing. You know, of the whatever 10, 15% I mentioned a few minutes ago that that was not self-inflicted for me <clears throat> was an issue from my childhood. And, you know, I dealt with that with God's help probably six years ago, five years ago. And I'll never forget. And I called the person and we got forgiveness with each other. And it was just like a burden lifted off of me. <clears throat> so the addiction is just the root of the tree. Or it's just a, a fruit of the tree. And we got this root issue. And then because we haven't dealt with this hurt and forgiveness, and either forgiving somebody or 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 forgiving yourself, okay? Because of that, we get these roots of the tree, and we get like me strung out on drugs. Then I got to kick dope, and then I got all the guilt from it. And then I'm living, you know, and God forgives and can deal with that. But then I'm living this time, and it just happens this way. I don't know if you've been on the carousel before of sober addiction withdrawal guilt it's a cycle it's like a carousel and um and then you then you got all this guilt to deal with which god god will help you and, and god's helped me thank you jesus and but tonight i just want to challenge you let's 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 see if we can deal with some of these root issues in our life i want you to think in your mind who is it as we talk about about hurting who is it that you've hurt that you've not sought after their forgiveness for or who is it that has hurt you in your life that you have not forgiven <clears throat> you know let's deal with the root issue you can be free from this you know I'll never forget that day it was at my house I still live in the house right here in Hammond but dealt with that and I just like man I, I, I'm free I, I felt a free and I have, I'm gonna tell you what I have been around that person multiple times and God just my heart's different it's just different. I have no ill feelings no more that I had for probably 15 years of my life. They were gone. God dealt with it through forgiveness. Um, you can be free. So we got some facts. We all hurt. We got some fiction here. 
which is false. Maybe this hurt will just disappear. You know, maybe tomorrow I could just wake up and say, you know what? It's not, nah, it ain't going to happen. Maybe this hurt will just disappear. The second point of fiction is I can reach my full potential and my full happiness without dealing with this hurt in my life. It's false. It's not going to happen. You know, tonight we come to a fork in the road, all of us in this room. We say we're either going to deal with this, we're, we're either going to deal with it and get forgiveness and get freedom through the power of, you know, the Bible says now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. You know, there's a power that God put in us after salvation. See, we snuff that power out when we get, when we put anything between us and God. And man, have I been there through alcohol, every, you know, every substance, you know, we, we put that power out. God has given us the, the opportunity tonight that we can deal with this uh, forgiveness. Because here's the thing, you don't deal with this forgiveness you get to deal with something else. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 12 and verse 15, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Here we go. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. So we come to a point tonight where we say we can deal with this and dig deep and soul search it might be a phone call you know after you leave here asking somebody to forgive you or we can choose to continue on with with not being fully free and not having the freedom in your heart to to live every day peaceably because this is something you choose to not deal with so in matthew 6 the bible tells us here <clears throat> that let me back up the bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free you know i don't know about you but i i i've been to so many points in my life where i get uh, i'm sick and tired of not being free you know and being weighed down and and um and burdened down so we find here in verse 9, the Bible says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Many of us do not get forgiveness because we don't have the right perspective of God. We don't believe that God is powerful enough that he can, that, that he can work this situation out. You know, even this week, a situation where I was up most of the night praying on how to deal with it. And the time come to deal with it, and the Lord just helped, and it ended up being peaceable. But the Bible here says that, you know, this in chapter 6, the disciples come to Jesus and say, hey, Jesus, teach us how to pray. So this is Jesus' example on how we're supposed to pray. And he says, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, or holy be thy name. And, you know, there's an almighty God that is in my heart and hopefully is in your heart. And and is in this room who loves you. You know, he loves you with an everlasting love. And I feel like so many times God has has tried to get my attention and 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 pressed me and and, and I feel like God is come on, Nathan, you you can be free. You can be free. You know, you can know the truth and the truth sets you free. You can get forgiveness and ask others for forgiveness, but instead because of the hurt that I'm dealing with, because of the hurt of, of who I've hurt or or the people that have hurt me, I wallow, wallow in the addiction. Wallow because temporarily it eases it. Always only temporarily. You know, why do cool cigarettes say they satisfy? Because it's a lie. I've smoked a cool cigarette before. I was a, more of a camel light hard pack guy, but I've smoked one before and it didn't satisfy me. Guess what? I was I just wanted another one. Hallowed be thy name, a holy God. You know, a real neat thing that I was thinking about just the other day is you know, people in China right now can pray and God hears every word they say. 
People are praying in Mexico, God can hear every word they say. You know, we're never going to get past <clears throat> this hurt. And, you know, because of the hurt, a lot of times what ends up happening, we become angry, right? We become bitter against that person. I remember the person that I hadn't forgiven. I'd go around them, and you could ask my wife. I, I didn't want to be around them. Now I can go right around them, and everything's fine. Why? Because forgiveness has happened, and Almighty God has did a work. Only Jesus can help us. <clears throat> our viewpoint of God determines our future. Will I let God help me? Who is it right now that you're thinking about? Who is it that angers you? Who is it that frustrates you? Who is it that you've hurt and you know in your heart you need to call them and say, man, I'm, not, I'm sorry. The Bible tells us in verse 10, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. You know, we can be at peace. Here we go with forgiveness in verse 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Verse 14. For if we forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So this forgiveness thing, not only is it important for you to be free on the inside, in your heart, in your soul, your, your inner man or inner woman. You know, the Bible tells us here, but if you forgive not men their trespasses. You know, so let's say, you know, <clears throat> that Ramsey, he does something to hurt me and he never has. I don't think he ever would. But if he did something to hurt me, something about sweet potato pie, right? Something you like sweet potato pie? I mean, okay, got it. All right. But he does something to hurt me, and I say, you know, I'm going to choose that that I'm just not going to forgive Ramsey. I'm going to choose. I'm at the fork in the road tonight. You know, Ramsey's hurt me, and it, and, it, and it hurt deep. Maybe I heard he was talking about me behind my back. That would hurt me. You know, that stuff like that hurts, right? Do y'all hurt too? Do you hurt? Can you admit that? Yes. It, are we too bullheaded and stubborn to say, I don't hurt? Is your facade that strong? that you've taken all this hurt and suppressed it down, or now you're just an overachiever. You know, I, I'm just not even going to think about what happened to hurt me, but Ramsey's hurt me. He's talked about me behind my back. I say, I'm not going to, I choose to not forgive you. And the Bible here says, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, and I know a lot of y'all know this verse, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Pretty dangerous ground. You know, the Bible tells us in Luke, Jesus on the cross, I believe it was his first saying that he said. I believe his first, either first or second. But what did he say on the cross? Father what? Anybody know? Father what? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus Christ, who's in my heart, who, who the Holy Spirit's here. I can follow him. Is the Holy Spirit working on you tonight, putting somebody's name in your mind who you need to forgive or somebody? Maybe you need to forgive yourself. You know, maybe you need to forgive yourself. You know, I've blown it in life. Look, I'm an RU guy. I'm okay with that. You got me? I'm really okay with that. I, you know, I just am. I'll be an RU guy till the day I die. It's okay that we've blown it because we can be overcomers. We can be overcomers. But uh, we the whole we got the Holy Spirit, you know. I don't want to get to the point where that I need the Father forgiving my trespasses. You follow me? But since God has forgiven us and saved us, why shouldn't we forgive others? But Jesus on the cross, the second sand, he said, "What, Father, forgive them." Jesus Christ, a hundred percent God, a hundred percent man went to the cross willingly for us, you know, and, and you know, it was tough for him. Uh, I'm going to read another uh, verse here. The Bible tells in Romans 12, 2, who, well, I'll back up, looking for, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. 
you know, Jesus embraced, <clears throat> embraced what he had to do, the pain that he was about to go through for us. He, he embraced it. He didn't, he didn't push it aside. He, he didn't run from it. You know, he did go to the heavenly father and say what? If nevertheless, but thou, not my will, but thine be done. You know, Jesus, he knew what he was about to go through suffering, the, the crown of thorns and the beating. And, and I, you know, the, these pictures that we see, they, they show Jesus a little crown of thorns and blood. You know, the Bible tells us that Jesus was not recognizable as a human being beaten to a pulp. The cat and nine tails whipping him and flesh ripping out. A lot of people died on the cat and nine tails. You understand that? Their, their organs would be laid out. I'm talking blood everywhere. If this was the cat and nine tails, this whole back wall would be full of blood. Jesus, knowing he was going to go through that, he embraced it. The Bible says, who for the joy that was set before him. The joy that was set before him? Us. Knowing that redemption because of Jesus dying on the cross, he, he paved the way. You know, that forgiveness that you're, that you're harboring in you and that you're not, the unforgiveness, excuse me, that you're harboring in you, that you're not willing to let go, Jesus has already paid for it. You know, Jesus is saying to you right now, if you'll listen, he's saying to you, he's saying to Nathan, we can get past this, Nathan. We can get past this and be the man that God wants you to be. Be the woman that God wants you to be. Don't you get tired of wallowing and back and forth? You know, I don't want to step foot in another rehab another day in my life. I done been there for years or locked up. No. Nah. Jesus is the great healer. And you know, right now, if you'll listen and open your heart, Jesus is saying, come unto me, all you that are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus is also saying, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me you know i will i will never <clears throat> be able to help others with unforgiveness in my heart you know even today and i knew i was going to be speaking this it's just god trips me out <laughs> ah man you know today you know i ask Wanted to make sure I didn't have all against somebody today. I will never be able to help others the way that God wants me to with unforgiveness in my heart. I will never be able to love my family, my wife, my kids, my parents, you, my fellow brother, with unforgiveness in my heart. I will never be the man that God has created me to be or the lady that God has created you to be with unforgiveness in my heart. The Bible tells in Luke 23, 34, Jesus said once again, he said, Father, forgive them. You understand that? The same pain, 100% man, the same pain that we would feel, it's excruciating pain. We just, we can't even comprehend it. You know, a lot of times we think about the three crosses up on a hill. These men were crucified. The crawl, their feet just a foot off the ground. So the people going in um, to the city could look eyeball to eyeball with them. And they would tell their kids, listen, you act up and, and you don't pay your taxes or you do this or that. The Romans will crucify you. And Jesus, all through that pain, he went through and he says, Father, forgive me. You tell me that that Jesus has, has paved the way for this forgiveness, but we're that prideful where we say, you know, I just, I just can't, I can't forgive them. I just, I just can't do it. 
<clears throat> There's a freedom in forgiveness. There's a fulfillment in forgiveness. And there's a new focus in forgiveness. You know, we don't have to be bogged down with this anymore. So just to recap and we're done. We all hurt. You know, and some of us in our life, if we don't watch it, we'll be like my grandfather. You know, now it's a little different analogy, of course. I don't think people generally get healed from strokes. But my grandfather, he, he was cruising right along in life. Everything running pretty smooth. And he had the stroke. He was never the same. A lot of us cruising along in life pretty good. Something happens to you. Somebody's hurt you deeply. And, <clears throat> and you're not the same today because of it. You're just not the same person. You know it in your heart. You got unforgiveness and bitterness. And uh, it's, it's become a fruit of the tree because you hadn't dealt with this root issue of unforgiveness. And you're just like my grandfather. He was never the same. You know, he always was paralyzed. He never could talk right after the same. And he died that way. He sure did. He died that way. And we come tonight to a choice, to a fork in the road, and we say, you know what? We can deal with this, or we can just continue on how we are and become bitter. We hurt. Fact. Fiction. Maybe this hurt will just disappear. The truth can set us free. What's the truth? We can experience this forgiveness. Only Jesus can help us. Right now, Jesus is saying, come unto me, all you that are burdened and heavy laden. Maybe that's you tonight. You're burdened and heavy laden. and I'll give you rest. So what do we do about this? How do we get this forgiveness? You know, you got to voice it. You know, I don't, I'm not saying everybody needs to start jabbering out loud, but sometime or another, I would voice it and say, in the name of Jesus, I forgive myself. You know, in the name of Jesus, I forgive so-and-so, whoever's hurt me. And then this one might be a little more difficult, but in the name of Jesus, I pray blessings over all that has hurt me. You know, for some of you, you need to make a phone call. You know, tonight's an all-night prayer meet. Maybe this is the night where you say, man, I can get some freedom from this. I'll never forget the day at my house after I made that call. I promise you, I really felt like that I was 20 pounds lighter. You know, I want you all to know that I care about you and I believe in you. And I pray that you'll experience forgiveness. Let's bow our heads. He really went deep with that tonight. Amen. I know probably through a lot of minds tonight went some type of hurt and you had to probably go all the way back to where you were a child, probably many of us here. Whatever hurts you have. I like what he said. A lot of the cons a lot of the fruits that we have is what we can see out. Like the smoking, the drinking, the anger, the bitterness, everything. That's just the fruits. But there is the root problem that he mentioned. And a lot of you could go back to something in the past. Something that someone maybe did to you. And you're bitter and you're still anger. Have the anger too. If you have the chance, I like what he said, pick up a phone and call the person. And the person might be at the other line, might say, well, I don't care. But you can tell them clearly, I forgive you. He's absolutely right. You will feel the change, like do something like, and they're down. I like what he said, it was like 20 pounds off. That spirit just left them. And that could be someone here tonight. But even more important than that to start with. First, if God spoke to you, spoke to me, just raise your hand acknowledging that to the Lord. God spoke to me tonight on that. Amen. If there's someone here tonight, you've never accepted Christ as your Savior. This is probably like for you, like, wow, you know, I've never heard something like that before. And God has never accepted you as your personal Savior. And you're like, or you never accepted Christ, I'm sorry, as your personal Savior. And it's something you say, you know, I need someone to take the Bible they, so they can show me that I can know Without a shadow of a doubt, I can go to heaven. That's a start right there 
for you to be able to see more deeper into the roots of your heart. If there's someone like that here tonight, you've never accepted Christ as your Savior. With heads bowed and our eyes closed, only me looking. Just raise your hand. Say, look at Brother Merced. I need someone to take the Bible and show me that I can know without a shadow of a doubt. 